like them wanting to go on an epic quest to slay a dragon? Tired of having to emulate your games? Well, have we got the product for you! New from Nintendo, an old game for only $5.99. Yeah! $5.99! For the low price of $5.99, you can play one of the most classic RPG experiences only in Japan, now in America. And if you want something more tangible, have we got an even better offer. For eight payments of $5.99, you can get your hands on the 30th Anniversary Edition. You can get a map, some posters, and a cool replica cartridge. All this and more for eight easy payments of $5.99. Get it quick, folks, because when it goes into the Nintendo Vault on March 31st... Really? Again with the limited release? Come on, Nintendo. You can do better than this. Pessimism aside, I love this game. It's literally the core essence of Fire Emblem, and what's more impressive is just how solid of a core Fire Emblem has. So, what is that core? The very essence of Fire Emblem is the dynamic of tactically leading your army to victory in order to save your country. And while it's gotten a lot of systems and polish over the years, this game doesn't have any of that. It's literally like if you took a modern Fire Emblem game and just stripped away all of the quality of life features. So you're given a sword and some friends. Now, kill all of the bad guys. All of them. Support conversations don't exist. Trading is a royal pain. The convoys cost money? Oh, and you actually have to get to the convoy on the map. Combat predictions don't exist. There aren't even squares to see where your unit can go. Where the fuck are my blue squares? There's more things missing that I haven't mentioned, but that would take ages to cover, and I'm sure you get the idea. Old game, bare bones features. Now what's amazing is, these missing features don't even really detract from the game at all. I actually think that the lack of features adds a lot of charm to the games. What you see is what you get. An old tactics game that started the Fire Emblem series. And man, this was a great start. The game gets straight to the point. Castle is in danger, recapture it for the good guys, rinse and repeat for 25 chapters. You know, it's a little formulaic, but so what? It's a good formula, it works. So there's definitely a learning curve that happens when you transition over from a modern Fire Emblem game to the granddaddy of them all. To ease those growing pains, some nice quality of life features were actually added in. First off, the biggest one is there's a turn rewind. This thing is pretty overpowered since you can rewind to any turn, and you can use it an unlimited amount of times. But the biggest drawback is you can't rewind to actual moves you took within the turn. You have to always go to the start of the turn. So if you lost a unit at the end of your turn, well, you gotta redo the entire thing if you want to bring them back. Honestly, I'm pretty okay with that. There's a double speed feature now, where if you want to fast forward through your enemy phase, you can do that. Or if you want to speed up your phase and the enemy phase, you can do that. Bookmarks. These bad boys have been a series staple since the Binding Blade. Just pop one of these in, and your game's as good as saved. Golly gee, thanks for making it easy to play this 30-year-old game. Now when does it get fun? The game gets fun when you actually come around to its mechanics. And for me, that was around Chapter 2. It's a much more slower-paced and methodical game than modern Fire Emblems. A lot of the modern conveniences that allow you to play faster just aren't here. When you're about to engage in combat, you have to actually look at your enemy stats and compare. There's no prediction. Now, while the newly added rewind does give you a lot of room for error, the cost of having to go to the start of a turn is enough of a detractor to make you want to avoid death at all costs. As mentioned before, there are no in-combat predictions. You gotta be very particular with the way you place your units and you have to make sure that you check the enemy. Besides, there might just be an ally waiting to be recruited. How's the balance? It exists. I mean, in a game where your healers don't even level up by healing, you know, you, you only expect so much. It's definitely one of Shadow Dragon's weirdest quirks. But man, you just can't hate it. It's trying its best. Oh yeah, there's an anniversary edition. Okay, so I'm a complete sucker for this kind of stuff. And this collector's edition is sweet. Inside the grand box is another box! And a book! It's a nice and weighty book detailing Mart's world, as well as illustrations of the crew throughout the years. Look! He has no pants! The other big keeper of this set is the replica NES box. And I absolutely love it. It is just packed with stuff that an actual NES game would come with. You've got a nice poster of the world map, as well as a mock-up Nintendo Power poster. 
What do you mean a poster addiction? I don't have that. That's weird. And look, it comes with a freaking manual. Dude, I haven't seen a manual with a game in like forever. Now for the crowning emblem of this collection, the Glass Shadow Dragon cartridge. This thing is beautiful. It's got a nice, clean, and classy look. All around, I'm just a really big fan of this collection. And that just about does it for Shadow Dragon. So what are my closing thoughts on it? Shadow Dragon is by no means perfect, but wow if it isn't impressive. I mean, think about it. This is an NES game from 1990, and while it doesn't have a lot of things that farms have today, it certainly has a lot of things that are still in the series. To say I'm impressed is underselling it. I'm genuinely surprised by how much they were able to squeeze into a little Famicom game. And this game is pretty hard to get into. Its rough edges might be a bit of a turnoff, especially if you've never played Fire Emblem before, which would make the game pretty hard to get into. Which, uh, lucky for you, I made a little Fire Emblem retrospective. Regardless of that though, I can still say that I thoroughly enjoyed playing this game. And for the Anniversary Edition? If you enjoy Fire Emblem, I'd say go for it. There's a lot of cool things in there that you might enjoy, like the glass cartridge, or the posters, you know? It's a lot of nice novelty stuff. Wait a minute. This isn't gonna fit in my Switch. Hey, thank you for making it to the end of my video. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. And if you want to stay updated, hit the bell to get notifications. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.